Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2, second channel video. What I'm gonna talk about today are EEPROMs. So what you see here is my rather messy collection of ICs that sits on my bench, sort of to the left of my IBM 5170, or to the right of the bench where I work on Commodore 64s, things like that. One day I intend to go through and sort all this stuff. There's a combination of EEPROMs, 74 LS TTL logic. These are probably SID chips here. There's just a whole bunch of different stuff here. But the topic of today's video are these, which are EEPROMs, erasable programmable read only memory. Unlike this IC, which is a normal read only memory, it's manufactured with the information already on it, or sometimes it is programmable, but it's only programmable once. Once it's programmed, that's it. It's got the information on it for good. But EEPROMs, if we take a look at this one, has a little window on it where you can actually see the die of the chip inside of there. What the window allows is a special wavelength of UV light to penetrate and actually erase the chip. You can read the article on Wikipedia about EEPROMs to find out more about how this actually works. But the general gist is you expose the chip to UV light for say 10 or 15 minutes to that specific wavelength and the chip comes out blank and ready to be used again. Sorry, my AC just turned on. It's really hot in Portland, so you'll hear some background noise. Here's an example of an EEPROM eraser. It's called the Data Erase 2. If I slide this open, inside, you'll see that there are positions for up to four ICs, and you can see a glass tube under there, and that is a special type of UV fluorescent lamp. And you close this up, and there's a switch, this particular one has a little adjustment for how long you want it to run for. And what happens is it starts to beep when it's done and you open this up and you take your chips out and then you can use them. What's pretty amusing to me is that often when I'm working with these chips, I'll have them sitting around and they'll look like this with the window exposed. And I always get a million comments from everyone saying, oh, you have to cover that up or the chip's gonna get erased. It was very typical when chips were actually used in production like these ones here, that the manufacturer just stuck a paper label over them, usually showing what the chip was, and it was inside the computer. Sometimes the label was like this one, and it's actually metallic, so no light can actually pass through this label. What's really amusing to me is when people tell me to cover these up, I'm not quite sure what they think is gonna happen by these chips just sitting on my bench here. I'm sitting under LED lighting in my basement here. There's no UV light floating around in here that's gonna erase all of these EEPROMs that are sitting here. And these, some of these have been here for over a year or two in this exact position on my bench, and the light is on almost all of the day, and nothing ever has been erased here. You really need to expose them to the UV light from an eraser like this to actually erase them. I have read about some tests that people have done where they leave these chips out in sunlight outside, and they have had some success at actually erasing the chips in the sunlight. It doesn't happen super quick, but with certain chips, it actually happens faster than you'd think. The thing is we know that sunlight has ultraviolet light in it, so it's not totally surprising that that is possible. But if you look at the spectral output of a regular indoor white LED bulb, it's not putting out UV. It has phosphor inside the dye to convert the blue light that the LED generates into white light, usually with various peaks in red and some in green and then a bunch in blue. On top of that, if you take one of these chips and you install it inside a computer, it's inside the computer. Like there's no light inside the computer, not even the light from your room lights, especially not any sunlight getting into the computer. Maybe if the machine was up in the window and some light would shine through the vents, it's possible it could hit some of the chips in there. But even that is pretty unlikely because as the sun moves, it's going through little slits in the back of the machine and the sunlight's gonna move across various things. Perhaps if the computer were sitting in the same window for 30 years and it was one of the chips that was susceptible to being erased by sunlight, maybe that were possible. What I wanna do right now is take a test. I wanna grab a few of these random chips that have stickers on them, ones that were installed from the factory. In fact, why don't we use these three chips right here and we'll use this chip. I'm gonna make sure they're all programmed with something, check them in the EEPROM programmer, and then I'm gonna stick them in this EEPROM eraser. This one's a little different because it's got a drawer the fluorescent tube is installed inside here, and when you put the chips here and you close the drawer, it shines down through the window. I'm gonna use this one as opposed to that other one I just showed because this has a broken timer, which means if I turn this on, I can keep the EEPROMs in the eraser for an hour, for instance. 
My idea is that these chips with these paper labels are still actually going to get erased by the EEPROM programmer. This one here has what looks like a metallic label, like foil. So this one won't let any light through it. I don't think there should be any problem here. And of course, this one will get erased <laughs> without fail. That will get erased. So the first step is let me make sure that all of these have information on them and I will save whatever's on them onto the computer so that I can then do a compare after I leave it in the eraser for a while. So please keep in mind that this test is by no means scientific. I'm not really controlling for anything very well here. I'm just gonna label all these chips one, two, three, and four, and I'm just gonna read them all in here and then save the files that I read off of them onto the computer for later comparison. I am gonna have to peel up the label on this one a little bit because I honestly cannot tell what kind of chip this is. So the markings are covered. It's an AMD chip. All right, I can just make out that's an AMD 2764. These two are 27256s and this is a 27128. Okay, all four of these have been read out and saved onto the computer. So let's stick them all in the drawer here. Like so, I'll close the drawer and we'll turn this on. There's actually a little window on this EEPROM programmer where you can see the ultraviolet light coming out there. So don't look into that. I'm just gonna go ahead and start a timer for 30 minutes and come back after this has baked a while. All right, 30 minutes has passed. Let me turn this off and there are the chips. Let me quickly test to see which are good and which have been erased. After 30 minutes, for sure this uncovered one will be erased. All right, so of the first batch, of course, the one without the sticker was erased, but the other three still verify perfectly. So into the cooker for another 30 minutes. And of course, I'm not gonna bother trying to put the blank one in here any further because it's already erased. And time for another 30 minutes. All right, 60 minutes. Here's the latest sheet. So everything is still verifying. I did accidentally mark that as blank. And that's because I had the EEPROM programmer configured for the wrong model of chip and it was coming back as blank. But with the correct one configured, 2764, it's all good. So you know what? I was gonna do another 30 minutes in here, but I think I'm just gonna up it to say two more hours in here. So another 120 minutes. And let's see if that has any effect. All right, it's been 180 minutes and here are the current results. No changes. So I think at this point, I'm just gonna go and put it in for 10 hours in here. And I think after 10 hours, if these chips are still with their contents and not erased, then I'm gonna say that paper stickers work well. But let's see, 10 hours coming now. And 10 hours have passed. The air conditioning always seems to turn on exactly when I hit the record button on the camera. Anyhow, after 10 hours, I have the results written on this post-it note since I ran out of space here. And here they are. Yep, no change. All three of the EEPROMs that had a sticker of some kind on them still have their contents on them and they verify perfectly. So I guess that kind of clinches it. I was skeptical, but paper stickers like these, it's nothing more than a sheet of paper absolutely protects the contents of the EEPROM, at least from ultraviolet rays from one of these things, which may not be that great. Although this isn't running the original tube that I got from China when I bought this thing. A viewer actually sent in several new tubes for this and I replaced the one that's in here with a better name brand one. So maybe that means it has better rays, I don't know. But either way, it wasn't able to penetrate the paper sticker, the foil sticker on this EEPROM, I knew wouldn't be affected by the ultraviolet rays. And yeah, it wasn't, but nor were the paper ones. They withstood all those rays for what? Actually seven hours, 660 minutes. No, no, actually longer than that. I wrote 660 here, but it was actually 600 plus 180. So 780 minutes of UV in this thing, unscathed. Meanwhile, this one here without the covering on it, it did give up the ghost after just 30 minutes and it probably would have given up the ghost for even less time in here 
usually around 15 minutes I leave it in here for just to make sure that that's enough. Although this timer here, which is broken, only goes up to six minutes. So I suppose six minutes is all you need to erase an EEPROM. I don't know. Anyhow, I still stand by my assumption though that an uncovered EEPROM like this one inside of a computer is really safe. A, there's no ultraviolet rays bouncing around in my basement or in most people's houses because that would be really damaging to humans. Not just EEPROM data, but humans as well. But if you have an EEPROM and you're concerned, well, just take a little piece of paper like this, peel it off a post-it note, stick it on, that is good enough. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know what to do, all those usual things. And, and this is my second channel, so I could use a subscribe. If you don't mind, hit that button, little bell icon, all that good stuff. And check out my main channel if you haven't already. And yeah, that's it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.